Hello students, the purpose of this video is to get you acquainted with linear equations. On your screen, you see three different formats that we generally deal with when we're writing out linear equations. We have standard form, slope-intercept form, and point-slope form. Each of these provides different information and we can actually use them in different situations to find other information we may need about a line. When I'm working in standard form, you'll notice that my x and y variables are on the same side of the equation with their coefficients a and b both being non-zero values. When I'm working with slope-intercept form, I bring in the common symbols m and b, and m stands for slope and b stands for y-intercept. For this reason, we generally in mathematics do not ever use m and b as variables because we know that they have meaning, again, m being our slope and b representing our y-intercept value. In point-slope form, you'll notice that I have the m, which is still the slope, and I bring in x sub 1 and y sub 1, and these actually represent specific coordinates. So when we know at least one point on our line, these can be very useful to us. When we talk about slope, slope helps us to determine the rate of change by looking at the relationship between horizontal change and vertical change. So that word, rate of change, is super critical when thinking about slope. Um, when you're applying this concept of slope out in the real world, you're really thinking about, okay, what is the cause and effect relationship between two items? What is the range of change, rate of change? As my x's increase, what happens to my y's? We'll use the letter M to represent slope, and we say rise over run. And if you need the actual formula, that's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, because again, it's the difference in rise, so those are your y values, your vertical change, over your run, your horizontal change, which are your x values. Now, slope can be up or down, meaning positive or negative. Positive slopes can be whole numbers or fractional values, and downhill slopes can be negative values and negative fractional values. But some of our lines are going to go completely straight up and down, and then some lines are going to go side to side. So we want to think about those slopes because we have special cases. When you're dealing with a vertical line, if you think about what a vertical line looks like, and I'm going to try to draw it as... Um, good as I can. Oh, I am drawing a horizontal line. Let's try that again. A vertical line going completely straight up and down. If I am trying to measure the slope between this point and this point, um, I know that I am going to rise a certain number. So I'm just making points because that's a certain number. So I rise some number and I don't run because I start here and I rise and I end here, so there is no run. This slope is considered undefined because we know that when zero is in the denominator of a fraction, it cannot be solved. It's not able to have a solution and therefore is undefined. However, when we're working with a horizontal line and we are trying to go from one point to the other point, um, when I think about how much I rise to get from here to here, I actually don't rise any, but I do have to run and go across a certain number of values. And so since zero is in the top of my fraction, the slope will always be zero. So horizontal lines always have a slope of zero. So this slide just puts it all together, reminding you that we can have positive slopes, we can have negative slopes, we can have zero slopes for our horizontal lines, and that we can have undefined slopes for our vertical line. Two things that I didn't talk about that I want to make sure you feel comfortable with are the way we write equations for vertical and horizontal lines. You'll notice that for my horizontal line, I have y equals k, where k is just a constant. I'm actually going to write this a little differently for you. We know that the equation of a line is written as y equals mx plus b, and we just said that the slope of a horizontal line is always equal to zero, so we get this. Well, 0x ends up going away, and we're left with just y equals b. So whatever the value of our y-intercept is, that is the value that we'll use to write our, our equation, and it will literally be y equals a number. When I think about a vertical line, if I were to follow that same strategy, y equals mx plus b, 
we run into an issue because our slope is undefined and there's no numerical value that I can put in for m when my slope is undefined. So this won't work when we're trying to write the equation of a vertical line. Instead, we're going to use the x value that a graph crosses. So if I look at this graph, this is just a rough sketch that I'm drawing. The equation would be x equals positive 3 because it's going through the 1, 2, 3rd tick mark, so the x equals 3 value. And by writing it as x equals, it lets me know that we're dealing with a vertical line. Now when, writing, when trying to write the equation of a line, there's three different situations that can occur. The first one is when you're given the slope and the y-intercept, and we love this because we really don't need to do any work. So for example, if I give you this equation, y equals 4x plus 5, it's very easy for me to identify my slope as 4 and my y-intercept as 5. And you can even do this reversed where if I said your slope is negative 2 and your b value is equal to 10, and you create your equation y equals negative 2x plus 10. So it truly doesn't require too much thought. Now in situation number two, you are either given the slope or maybe you're given the y-intercept in some point, but it's not that y-intercept point or it's not a point that's meaningful to you. So in this particular example, I am giving you the slope of three, so that means we know that our m value equals three, and I'm giving you a random coordinate point, four, two. So when I write my equation y equals mx plus b, I'm going to go ahead and plug in my m value, which is three. And because I know a coordinate, this is just an x point and then a y point, I can plug those respective values in for my x and plug it in for my y value. And this creates an equation that I'm able to solve, and I actually can solve for b, and I end up getting negative 10 is equal to b. And I can use that information to write me a new equation, y equals 3x minus 10. Situation number three is when you are given two points, but neither is the slope or the y-intercept. So it requires the most work because you have to begin by finding your slope and then you'll look for your y-intercept value. So in order to find my slope, I need to take y2 and subtract it from y1 and then over x2 subtract it from x1. So that's going to be 5 minus a negative 2 all over 2 minus a negative 3, which ends up giving me 7 over 5. Now that I have my slope, I can go back to my idea of y equals mx plus b and plug in my slope value, 7 over 5, and I need to include either one of my coordinates as my x and my y value. So I'm going to choose, um, let's do 2, 5. That just looks easier since there's no negatives. So I'm going to 2 there, 5 for my y, and again, I have an equation. Um, where I can solve for b. And so this gives me 5 is equal to 14 over 5 plus b. And if I move that on over, that gives me, looks like 11 fifths is equal to b. And I use that information to write my equation. y is equal to 7 over 5x plus 11 over 5. Now, one way that you may see this and that I may ask on, um, you know, some assignments is give you an equation and ask you to put it in slope-intercept form to determine your slope and y-intercept and then to graph the line. So starting with slope-intercept form, I have 3x plus 4y equals 4, and I want to get my y term by itself. So I'm going to begin moving my terms over to the other side in order to get my y by itself. And to write this a little neater, um, that is the same thing as saying 4 over 4 minus 3x over 4. And this is the same thing as saying y is equal to negative 3 over 4x plus 1. Let me draw this out a little more y. This looks a little messy. I apologize. And that would be your final equation. And we know that looking at this, my negative 3 fourths is my m my slope and positive one would be my y-intercept value. And then if I were to graph this line, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, 
one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five. Um, when I go to positive one, because I want to graph my y-intercept first, and then I'm going to plot the other points using my slope. So I'm going to go down three, one, two, three, and over four, one, two, three, four. Or I can go up positive three, one, two, three, and over negative four, so one, two, three, four. And roughly I get something that looks like this, and I could connect my points together, and I apologize, this isn't a great perfect straight line, but you get the idea. I have now graphed a linear function with a negative slope value. As always, I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Thank you.